If you've had amazing sex, but no connection in a relationship, right? <laughs> because of social media, there's this image that everyone else is having sex and I'm not. Like, I feel like that's like a very big feeling that a lot of people have and all the stats show that people are having less and less sex. There are more and more sexless relationships and marriages every single year and it's so much more common yet in our groups and online, everyone feels like, oh, they're getting some and they're getting yeah, some yeah, and they're yeah. getting some, but I'm not. And the truth is most people are not getting any. And, and that's just, I don't have the stats offhand right now, but whenever I've looked at the trends, that's what the trends show. To me, it comes back down to everything we've just been talking about. Sexual chemistry and attraction and connection is all based on A, how someone feels about themselves. If someone themselves is not feeling taken care of by themselves, attractive, investing in themselves, growing, feeling like they're becoming more and better, it's very unlikely that they're gonna wanna share their body, mind, emotions, and heart with anyone else in the most physically intimate way, which is sex. It's just unlikely. And chances are, if you don't think you're having those conversations you wanna have with your partner, where you are being open, where they are working on their values, where we do see each other striving, chances are that you're not gonna to wanna to have sex with them either. And so what we're seeing is that the challenge we're having in sex is actually coming from everything else that's going on. That there isn't a sense of growth, joy, purpose. Like great sex is a byproduct of great connection and intimacy. It's not a replacement for or a source of. If I asked everyone who's listening right now, put your hand up if you've had amazing sex, but no connection in a relationship, right? <laughs> like that's, that's been real. We've all used sex as a crutch. We've had relationships where every time we argued we had sex, it solved the problem. Every time something was going wrong, we had sex, it, it was figured out somehow. And the studies show that the chemicals released during sex make you feel like you're getting closer, even though you're not actually emotionally closer. So when you look at all of the stats, when you look at all the research, when you look at everything we've just described, sex is a byproduct of a healthy individual and a healthy individual and a growing individual and a growing individual coming together, sorting out their differences, having the fights they need to have, having the conversations they do, that naturally creates vulnerability, which leads to being able to expose ourselves at the deepest, most um, physical way that we possibly can. How can you expose yourself that vulnerably if, if you can't even have a vulnerable conversation with your partner because you just switch on the TV every night and avoid that difficult conversation. It becomes like a transaction. It becomes it? a transaction. And then sex becomes, in the best case, a crutch and a, and a hopeful aspiration on a special night or whatever it may be, or something we wait for and plan for and it never works out. As opposed to in the worst case, it just becomes something we're both not talking about, comfortable about, or even doing. And so- Or an obligation. Or an oblig, exactly, yeah, yeah, one, yeah, it? like Ugh. an obligation. And like <laughs> someone's just sitting there like, you know- Come on, three minutes. Literally, you yeah, get. yeah, all right, let's get it over and done with. Like yeah. that mindset. And I'm like, all, like there isn't, because we've lost intimacy in relationships. There is no intimacy. And so you can't force it physically. There's no intimacy in porn. There's no intimacy in porn for sure. They don't like do the small talk. I don't no. pay for that. There's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's no intimacy in porn. There's no, in, and, and the problem is, and this is, you know, the book starts with this quote, but it solves this problem very, very neatly and carefully. And it's this idea that the Buddha was once approached and asked, what's the difference between I like you and I love you? Which is a brilliant question. And the Buddha replied, when you like a flower, you simply pluck it. But when you love a flower, you water it every day. And to me, the one night stand, the porn, the dopamine hit, the release of chemical is the plucking, right? That's what we're all plucking all day long because that's all we can do. But the watering, the intimacy, developing intimacy, growing from entertainment to experiments, to experiences, to education, to engaging in service together, all of this creates so much intimacy that physical intimacy is a natural byproduct. It's not something you have to manage or engineer or manufacture, like it, it's not this separate thing. It's it's based on how close I feel to you. And the point is when don't feel close to our partners because we don't do anything that makes us closer every day. Sleeping in the same bed as someone does not make you close to someone. 
Living in the same house as someone does not make you close to someone. The only thing that makes you feel close to someone is when you feel you can be open and when you feel seen, heard, and understood in your most vulnerable, darkest, and open times. If you can do that, everything else is going to work. But if you can't do that, you can't just make it happen in a moment because you're meant to be together. You're meant to be in love. I'm not afraid of